Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to another PyKidify tutorial video. My name is Jay. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to save your PyQt application settings with QSettings class. So when you create a desktop application, normally you want to have a preference option allowing users to save different types of settings, such as window size, uh, last window close position, font style, background, and etc. So next time when the user reopens the application, all the configurations uh, will resume back to the last session. I want to just go to the documentation real quick. If we go to Q settings class documentation, and if I click on more, so under the detailed description, users normally expand application to remember its settings, such as window size, positions, options, etc. across sessions. This information is of often stored in the system registries on Windows. If I are Windows users, then the uh, settings information will save on the system registry uh, folder. And for Mac OS and iOS, uh, the settings information will save on the property list files. And for Unix systems, the settings information will be saved in the INI text files. That's just some of the information I want to quickly go over and because I'm using Windows my settings information will save uh, our registry uh, folder now let me just give you a quick demo on the exercise we'll be doing so here I have a, a blank uh, PyQt window and let me resize the window so I'll make the window a little bit small maybe to maybe like that so that should be uh, small enough now I'm going to move the window to top left hand corner now if I close the window and relaunch the window again, and so you can see that the window size and the window position resume back to the previous session. And this is pretty useful if you want to um, have different type of configurations embedded to your application or giving the users uh, different flexibility to configure different types of application settings. Now let me close this window and let's get started. So first thing first, I'm going to input my libraries. So from the pyqt widgets library module, uh, I'll input the Q application class and the Q widget class. And from the Qt core module, I'll input the Q settings class. Here I'm going to construct my uh, application class. So I'll name this class my app. And I'll pass the key widgets class as the parent class. And here I'm going to construct my Q applications instance. For the uh, my app instance, I'll name the instance as demo. And here I'll do demo.show. And let me just launch the window. And this is the window we have so far. Now if I resize the window and move the window to maybe right here. Now if I close this window and we launch my application, as you can see that the window size and the window position are reset back to the original uh, values. So which is going to be the center and this is the, the default window size. So to be able to store the setting information, here I'll create an object. So I'll call this, I'll name this object self.settings. And I'll pass the Q settings class. Uh, here let me open my registry editor. And I'll just show you where the, the information is stored. So you want to navigate to computer and each key underscore current user software. And that will be the folder where the uh, set information will get stored. The Q settings class takes two parameters. So the first parameter is going to be your uh, main folder name. So let's call this uh, folder name my Qt app. And the second parameter is going to be the sub folder name. And I'll name this. Uh, so I'll name this folder app one. And here uh, from the close events. The idea is every time when I close my application, the close events will fire. We want to save the settings value. 
So from the self that settings uh, object, and we want to use the set value method. And the first parameter is going to be a key to uh, reference and store the, the setting value. So let's say I want to save my window size and I'll name the key to uh, size. Actually, I'll name the key to window size. I think that'll be more appropriate. And to, um, so to get the window size, I can use self.size. And for the next setting, I want to save the windows position. So I'll name this key uh, window position. And to get the window position value, I can just use the POS method. Now here I'm going to insert a try accept block. So I'm going to retrieve the the uh, the window size information from my settings file. When you first launch your application, if the settings information is not available, then you're going to run into a num type object here. So that's why I'm inserting the try accept block just to bypass the error. So to retrieve the settings value, and the first item is the window size, and I'll pass the key window size. And this one is going to be position. So I'll use the self.move method. And I want to grab the last uh, windows close position. So I'll pass the key window, window position. And that's it. And here, let me insert another line of code. So if you want to figure out where the, the settings are stored, you can do print self.settings.file name. This will return the registry path where the uh, settings are stored. Now if I run it, and so from my command line, it tells me that the settings information is saved on the my Qt app app one. And if I move my window to my to the uh, top right hand corner, and I'm going to resize the window to maybe this big. Now close. And oh. So this takes one, so I need to provide at least one parameter. So I'll name this parameter events. Now let me try again. So if I launch the application and move the window to uh, top right hand corner, resize the window and close. Now here, let's go back to my registry editor. And if I just refresh and here's my Qt app folder. And if I expand the, if I expand the folder, and here's my app one uh, subfolder. So here uh, I have four files. Actually, these two files were created before. Now, if I delete my Qt app, so in case you want to uh, uh, reset everything from scratch, this time if I will launch my application, everything will reset to the original state. So this is everything I'm going to share in this video and hopefully you guys found the video useful. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.